This is the one and only Ivan, chapters 93 through 98. Chapter 93, Nervous. All day long, I knuckle walk circles around my cage. I'm so nervous I can't nap. I can't even eat. Well, not very much anyway. I'm ready to show Julia what I've made. It has to be Julia. She's an artist. Surely she'll look, truly look at my painting. She won't notice the smudges and tears. She won't care if the pieces don't quite fit together. She'll see past all of that. Surely Julia will see what I've imagined. I watch Ruby trudge sullenly through the four o'clock show, and I wonder, what will happen if I fail? What if I can't make Julia understand? But of course I know the answer. Nothing. Nothing will happen. Ruby will remain the main attraction at the Exit 8 Big Top Mall and Video Arcade, conveniently located off I-95, with two shows with shows at 2, 4, and 7, 365 days a year, year after year after year. Chapter 94, Showing Julia. It's time to show my work. The mall is silent, except for Thelma, the macaw, who is practicing a new phrase, uh-oh. Julia is finishing her homework. George is sweeping outside. Mac has gone home for the night. I grab knot tag and carefully pull out the folded papers. So many paintings. Page after page, piece after piece of my giant puzzle. I pound on the glass and Julia glances over. My fingers are trembling as I hold up one of my paintings. It's brown and green, a corner piece. Julia smiles. I display another picture and then another and another each one a tiny part of the whole. Julia looks confused. But what is it, she asks. She shrugs. It doesn't matter. It's pretty just as it is. Uh-oh, says Thelma. No, I think. No. No, well, it doesn't matter. Chapter 95, More Paintings. George calls out to Julia. He's done for the night. Grab your backpack, he says, and hurry. It's late. Gotta go, Ivan, Julia says. Julia doesn't understand. I have to find the right pieces. I dig through the pile. They are somewhere. I know they are. I find one at, after another and another. I try to hold four of them up against the glass. Bob, I say, hurry. Help me. Hurry. Bob grabs paintings with his teeth and drags them to me. One by one, I shove pictures through the window, crack. They crumple and tear. There are too many pieces. My puzzle is too big. Careful, Ivan, Julia says. Those might be worth millions someday. You never know. She arranges the paintings into a neat stack. I suppose Mac's going to want to sell these things in the gift shop. She still doesn't understand. I shove more out the hole and more and more, all of them, one after another, so Ivan's been painting, has he, George says as he puts on his coat. A lot, Julia says with a laugh, a whole lot. You're not taking all those home with you, are you? George asks. I mean, no offense to Ivan, but they're just blobs. Julia thumbs through the towering stack of paintings. They might not be blobs to Ivan. Let's leave those by the office, George suggests. Mac will want to try selling them. Although, why would anyone pay 40 bucks for a finger painting a two-year-old could do? I'll never get it. I like Ivan's work, Julia says. He puts his feelings into them. And he puts his hair into them, George says. Julia waves goodbye. Night, Ivan. Night, Bob. I press my nose against the glass and watch her walk away. All of my work, all my planning, wasted. I look at Ruby, sleeping soundly, and suddenly I know she'll never leave the Big Top Mall. She'll be here forever, just like Stella. I can't let Ruby be another one and only. Chapter 96, Chest Beating. Often, when visitors come to see me, they beat their hands against their puny chests, pretending to be me. They pound away, soundless as the wet wings of a new butterfly. 
The chest beating of a mad gorilla is not something you ever want to hear. Not even when you're wearing earplugs. Not even if you're three miles away wearing earplugs. A real chest beating sends the whole jungle running, as if the sky has broken open, as if the men with guns are near. Chapter 97. Angry. Thump. The sound, my sound, echoes through the mall. George and Julia spin around. Julia drops her backpack. George drops his keys. The pile of pictures goes flying. Thump, thump, thump. I bounce off the walls. I screech and bellow. I beat and beat my chest. Bob hides under knot tag, his paws over his ears. I'm angry at last. I have someone to protect. Chapter 98, Puzzle Pieces. After a long while, I grow quiet. I sit. It's hard work being angry. Julia looks at me with wide, disbelieving eyes. I'm panting. I'm a little out of shape. What the heck was that, George demands. Something's really wrong, Julia says. I've never seen Ivan act this way. He seems to be calming down, thank goodness, George says. Julia shakes her head. He's still upset, Dad. Look at his eyes. My pictures are scattered all over the floor like huge autumn leaves. What a mess, George says, sighing. I wish I hadn't bothered sweeping tonight. Do you think, Ju do you think Ivan's okay? Julia asks. Well, probably just a temper tantrum, George says. He reaches under a chair to retrieve a brown and red picture. Can't say I blame the guy stuck in that tiny cage all these years. Julia starts to answer, but then she freezes. She cocks her head. She stares at her feet where my pictures lie in disarray. Dad, she whispers, come see this. I'm sure he's another Rembrandt. I'm sure here's another Rembrandt, George says. Let's pick these up and get going, Jules. I'm exhausted. Dad, no, she says again. Seriously, look at this. George follows her gaze. I see blobs, many, many blobs, along with the occasional swirl. Please, can we go home now? That's an H, Dad. Julia kneels down, straightening the picture, and then another. That's an H, and here she grabs more pictures. Put this one here, and I don't know, maybe that one. Now you might have an E. George rubs his eyes. I hold my breath. Julia is running now. She picks up one more picture, sets down another. It's like a puzzle, Dad. This is something. It's a word, maybe. Maybe even words. And a picture of something. A giant picture. Jules, George says. This is crazy. But he's looking at the floor, too, wondering, wandering from picture to picture and scratching his head. H, Julia says. E, O, O. Julia chews her lower lip. H-E-O, and that looks a lot like an I. H-E-O-I, George writes in the air with his finger. I-E-O-H, not the letter, an actual I, and that's a foot or maybe a tree and a trunk. Dad, I think that's a trunk. Julia runs to my window. Ivan, she whispers, what did you make? I stare back. I cross my arms. This is taking much longer than I thought it would. Humans. Sometimes they make chimps look smart.